Hello, it's Caleb again, and today we're going to be looking at a CAD CAM package called Techni. It is an open source project. It works on Windows, and it's pretty cool, I have to say. Um, I've been working with it for about two hours now, playing around with it, and it seems fairly easy in most respects. Um, Techni actually is a word that's derived from Greek, and it's typically translated as craftsman or craft or art. So I think that's kind of a fitting name for it. So let's get right into it. Uh, of course we're going to be making a um, uh, iPhone stand like all of the other CAD CAM softwares that I've been um, checking out so far so that we can kind of compare all of them together and see how they all do the same thing basically. So this is Techni and this is what you'll start off with. Basically, it kind of looks like Office, right? but basically to start off, we just go to New. It throws up a little wizard that, so you can basically set up the job. So I'm going to choose a tool. I'm going to choose millimeters for the unit of measurement. I'm going to change this to 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters ooh, by 18 or 19.0. Five. go down to the next thing origins so just like cut 2d it has the ability to change where the origin point is you have the top and bottom positioning for the zero, uh, z zero uh, location so that's nice you can name the project So there we go, and we want a rectangle instead of round, we hit OK, and here we are. We have our work area, we have basically over here we have the cut list, so this is basically what's going to be cut and when. We have down here the design um, tab, and then we have a 3D tab, and then we have a bunch of stuff up here. So we're going to go to insert first. We're going to go to shapes and down to this one to rounded rectangle. And now this whole area is changed over to creating that. And this one we're going to do, we're going to use the, this, we're going to check this little box for the filled. That basically is going to turn it into a pocket. If you don't have that checked, it's going to be a profile. It's kind of, this software's got sort of a quirky nature of it kind of, um, you have to be thinking about the camming of the geometry that you're making as you're drawing it, kind of. Or maybe you don't have to, but you if you don't, you have to go back and change it later. So yeah, I guess the thing is if you can think about both of those, both the CAD and CAM um, components together of what you're making at the same time, you can do stuff potentially a little bit faster, I guess. But So to go in here first, we're going to make the make the square you know the dimensions of the square and everything so here we can set where we're going to want it and this is going to be the inside um, slot for the phone to sit in so we're going to set that to zero for right now and that we're going to leave at 24 uh, we're going to leave those right where they are because that's where we want that um, corner radius yes okay hit OK and then all of a sudden it appears so we have that now so that's cool and then we go into the toolpath thing right here we hit options now as you can see we as we ch since we chose a default tool you have that option but you can also change that if you want for each individual um, cut um, we go to the depth we can see that the default depth is not where we not anywhere useful so we want to override that I this is one thing that I keep in mind right here if you're using this is that the finish depth is the first number I think it would make more sense in my head head anyways if the start depth was the first one but whatever so we're gonna make this 14 millimeters it has the same capabilities where we can either kinda do it like this or the zigzag which is what um, cut 2d called raster I believe so it has some neat features has some features if you do the zigzag And you can use a step over. 
So that's kind of interesting. It's It's got some cool stuff, I think. So basically, we want inside. All right, we're going to hit OK. We're done. And now we're going to make another rounded rectangle. And for this one, we're going to go to Configure, Settings. We're going to go 0, 0 on that one, obviously. This will be, uh, let's see, I think it's 90. Yes, 90 by 50. And the rounded corner will be the same. Hit OK. It's created. So that's cool. All right, so that's done done now okay we want that on the outside I didn't even see tabs cool I was wondering where those were so that's neat I'd ran through this once before and kind of you know one of those situations where you <laughs> I'm learning as I go along and Part of this was I wanted to make this video only a couple hours after downloading it and installing it just so I had kind of the most raw um, take on everything. So we go to depth, override the depth here to 19.06, which will definitely cut down through that. There, I'm going to try out this tab thing. Use tabs, okay, number four. Done. I don't see them. Build, oh, okay, cool. Hmm. So that's kind of how that works. That's sort of cool. Done. Done here. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to go to edit. So first we're going to click on this rectangle. And then we're going to shift, click on the outside rectangle area. Interesting thing on this is that you don't, you, you can't really click on, on the lines like most software uh, that I've used so far it actually thinks about it as a closed shape so you can click basically anywhere inside of the shape and that will select it so something to keep in mind I guess so we're going to hit a line and then we're going to do center horizontal I believe, I believe it's this one that I want nope I was wrong this one boom there we go so we're centered alrighty so basically we can go over to the 3d view and you can see all of the tool paths right there and you can see the tabs they're kind of skinny but they're there so that's kind of cool and we can actually go up here to the textures click on that Hmm. Oh, there we go. That was odd. There. Huh. Open source software. Sometimes it doesn't work every time. Uh, I've actually had it crash once when I first, the first attempt at doing anything with it, I accidentally crashed it. Still don't know what I might have did. Um, you can do a transparency so you can just see the tool paths. I kind of think that's cool. You can kind of make it, if your computer has trouble with the graphics, you can actually do a low quality pass and it kind of runs through a little less of the, of the processing. You can do an animation, but really it's kind of lame. All it does is basically just move it along like this and then it eventually hits a point where it stops every time. So kind of a cool thing. As far as the 3D mode goes though, I have to say it looks in some ways better than cut 2D's um, rendering uh, process for the 3D. 
I, I don't know. So basically, yeah, we're done. We've got everything basically all ready to transfer out. So to move this out of here, we're going to go to Toolpath. And you can choose between ShopBot or G-Code. We don't have any of that. We want to go with millimeters. Uh, let's go with, uh, yeah, desktop will be fine. Let's go with um, save no we we want it all to be one path this is kind of cool it has the ability to deal with um, spindle speeds and quite a few other kind of more advanced things so we can just hit okay now this is basically the same way that um cut 2d was warning me that the depth of the cut was too deep for the material and everything. Uh, this basically is saying the same thing. It's also saying that the tool apparently that's in the database is too um, short potentially. So I'm guessing that I'd have to change a lot of that stuff and keep track of that myself, which I would do anyways if I was actually planning on cutting with this. So now that we have that done, Let's pop out of this, and we have this right here. I'm just going to open this up in Notepad++ for a second. Because the first time I tried running it in Linux CNC, this ampersand actually screwed up stuff. I'm not sure why, but it did. So I'm just going to take it out. If I was actually going to do the job, I would probably do a little bit of research and figure out if that ampersand, what that ampersand was supposed to be there for. Uh, but since I don't, since all we're going to do is do a simulation, so I've basically got um, Linux CNC installed on a VMware um, system, and we can now be able to just kind of demo what we make in the different softwares in. Linux CNC, which is what I use anyways. So, fire this up, do a home all, just so the software thinks it knows where it is. Clear out these errors. We're going to go up here, open desktop. All right, so you can see the, right there that we have everything. And we'll just start it off. So basically, I have to say I like the software. Um, and because it's free, I'll probably end up using it at least a couple times and experimenting with it. Uh, that's, of course, one of the nice things about free software, open source software that is free is the fact that you can basically say well you know it might not be the best software but it does satisfy a lot of what I need it to do and I'm not spending any money so I can spend a little bit of time figuring out if I can make it do what I want it to do so I have to say after only about a couple hours of messing with this software and running through this simple job twice now once it kind of in practice and then another time for recording here, I would have to say that I, I'm pretty impressed with it. I'm pretty impressed that I was able to just simply go into it and intuitively take the knowledge that, I, that I've that i used in the other CAD softwares that I've, I've been trying out and make something like this. That's basically the same thing that I've made in all the other um, applications that I've been wanting to try out. The one thing that I have to say that I don't like about it or think is a little um, cumbersome is the fact that everything is kind of um, nested. Like all of the options, everything 
is there. I mean, it really has basically everything that Cut 2D has available to it, but where Cut 2D almost feels overly simplified because everything is just out there and ready for you to use, this software seems overly comp or complicated, even though it really only does the same kind of stuff. I feel like it it hides stuff in a way that makes it seem more com more complex or have more options. And I guess it, technically it advertises itself as a 2.5D uh, program, so I haven't tried any of that, so I don't know if it can do anything that is a little bit more advanced than Cut2D does or what I've done with um, with Inkscape and MakerCam, but so far I'm I'm liking it. And it seems to, other than the one little glitch with um, the ampersand um, symbol in the G-code, uh, I haven't seen anything um, glitch out to the point where the simulation of Linux CNC crashes or, or errors out. So I have to say it seems like about the same processes uh, is what I would expect from MakerCam. So I guess that's enough of looking at this thing doing doing its job. It's almost done. It's kind of odd that it goes up and back down. It's some of it's not as efficient as as I've seen in some of the other stuff. So I'm you know there's some things to say about that. So there it is. Did its job. So Techni, it's an open source CAD CAM software. I have to say that I think it's nice. Uh, I don't think that it's perfect, but it is free and it seems to function pretty well. And I think that after a couple um, tries with it, I think that you're, you can easily grasp it and master it. I think that if you just pick this software up and said, this is going to be my software, I think it would work. I don't think you'd have any trouble with it. It doesn't seem to be missing anything that for at least basic, you know, milling and stuff, it's probably not going to do anything that's, you know, ultra um, complicated or, or fancy, but it definitely seems like for free, it's a really nice um, application to try out and see what you think about it so yeah that's techni uh, cad cam and thanks for watching don't forget to like the video below and keep on making things bye